words overall are rare events, right? Uh, a word occurring in a document is rare, especially if it's a content-bearing word. So something like artwork. Um, you don't expect to see artwork uh, very often in, in, uh, in, in any random collection of uh, texts. But what makes words interesting is the, their occurrence is a contagious event. So what this means is once I see an occurrence of a word, I'm much more likely to see occurrence of the same word uh, close by, right, in the same document. So for example, once I have artwork in this lecture, I am much more likely to hear artwork again in the lecture, even though a priori this is a very, very infrequent words. So if you're looking for an analogy of word occurrence, they are infrequent, they're rare events, but they are not like lightning strikes. Right? Lightning strikes, uh, it's a rare event. Uh, con rare contagious diseases are another rare event. So words are a lot more like a contagious disease. Once you have a single occurrence in a certain area, in a certain document, you're much more likely to have subsequent occurrences of the same word. So uh, what you have at the bottom of the slide is the illustration of this. So I'm plotting the frequency of the word said uh, in the brown corpus versus the prediction uh, for the word said. So let's talk about what this means. Um, on the x-axis, you have 500 points. These represent the 500 documents in the brown corpus. And the y-axis is the frequency, how many times the word said occurred in that particular document. Now the reason we're looking at said is said is one of the most frequent, uh, it's probably the most frequent verb, it's the most frequent non-stop word um, um, in English. So it's, uh, it, it, it's good to use it because you, you see lots and lots of occurrences. Now what you see on the right uh, is the same picture. Uh, what's on the left is the actual frequency of the word said. What's on the right is the frequency that would be predicted if the word said occurred independently of itself. So if occurrence of a word was like a lightning strike, those are the frequencies that you would expect to see in the brown corpus, right? So you see some variation, right? Um, some documents will have higher frequencies, some documents will have lower frequencies, but in general that variation is fairly contained. Almost all documents will have between 1 and 10 occurrences of the word said. So that's what the prediction says. That's what said should occur like. On the left is what it actually occurs like. And there you get a completely different picture. You get some documents with very high counts of the word said, over 30. And then you get lots and lots of documents with zero count uh, of the word said. So it just doesn't occur there at all. So, uh, now, the total number of counts on the left and on the right is exactly the same. So what you see is, the, even, even, even a vanilla word like said is very, very contagious. Once you have it in the document, it's much more likely to, uh, to be repeated again and again and again. Uh, um, so it holds for frequent words, it also holds for error words like artworks. So how many times did we have artworks in this lecture? If you're modeling words, what this means is you cannot model text effectively by a multinomial or a Poisson distribution. So those distributions are appropriate when you have sampling with replacement. Right? So uh, you have words sampled independently of each other and also independently of previous occurrences of itself. So a multinomial and a Poisson, they're very common model of word frequencies, and we'll see them later in the course used in the probabilistic models of retrieval. And these models uh, uh, don't respect the clumping nature of word occurrences. And we'll see how, uh, how researchers have tried to tweak those models to, uh, to, take, uh, to, to be aware of the clumping. So if you wanted to construct a probabilistic model of text, a much better model would be something like polyazurn. Right? So polyazurn, you're sampling words from an urn, but you are putting them back and replacing each word with two copies of itself. Right? So the word becomes much more likely to be sampled again under polyazurn. We're not going to spend much time on this. Uh, I'm, I'm just putting this out for your, uh, for your 
for your information if you ever have to do these.